Hello out there, and today we're going to be talking about the Kaiser Wakulla. And in front of you today are both variations of the model, and what we have are exactly the same handles with titanium uh, frames and inset stainless steel liner locks with S35VN blades, but the blade shapes are a little bit different. So up top, as you can see right here, we have a clip point and a slight recurve and a partial flat grind. And then my personal Wakulla down below here is a full flat ground knife and it is a modified spear point. But like I said, both S35VN, a little bit of variation when it comes to this model, which is always cool, like uh, multiple choices. I definitely like seeing that. And this is a knife that I've just been interested in from the get-go. The first time I saw it, I knew that I wanted to get it. Um, I've always liked the designer, Steve Jernigan, because he's from my area of Florida. And also, uh, the name Wakola is actually, it's named after one of the, um, the biggest freshwater springs in the United States, which is not far from where I lived for a very long time. It's only a, a few miles away from Tallahassee. So I actually spent a lot of time um, in those springs, you know, on the water, boating, drinking, doing all the stuff that college-age kids do. And so, yeah when I heard that a knife was going to be called the Wakulla, definitely had some interest in that. But unfortunately, this knife has a number of issues. It has a number of things with it that are just unkaiseresque when it comes to, uh, I think, design flaws and fit and finish issues and things that, yeah, you just wouldn't expect and that I haven't seen from other Kaiser knives. And I want to sort of segue from that to talk about the price and talk about value because uh, that is something that, yeah, it's just such a a big number that it's one that I have to lead with and not something I really like to do. You know, usually when I review a knife, I like to talk about all the details and give you, you know, everything uh, about it and and all the great qualities or the, the negative qualities and let you decide for yourself before we get into the value talk. But seeing that this knife costs $188, I definitely needed to lead with that. <laughs> Because $188 is just too much. It's it's not it's not a good value for this knife. Um, this knife just doesn't have the Kaiser quality that I've seen from uh, from a lot of their other models. And just uh, in the competitive marketplace, there are just so many other knives at that price point or way cheaper that are better. And and don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to knock the knife uh, all that much. It's still a pretty good knife, but not at that price point. You know, Kaiser themselves puts out a better knife at a cheaper price in a lot of different ways. So this one right here, the Rogue, with a very similar materials, S35VN titanium, um, much cheaper and a better knife in my opinion. You know, so there are just a lot of options out there, but if you are thinking about this knife, if you check it out in this video or just see pictures of it and you think it's a cool one, which it is, uh, let me tell you right now, before we get into anything else, that you can find this at a much better price than the 188 that you'll see it listed on a number of websites. You know, I didn't pay $188 for it. I wouldn't have. I wanted this knife for almost a year before I picked it up because I wasn't going to shell out that much money. But I saw it on Mass Drop. And I got it on Mass Drop at right around $100 plus, $110, bucks, something like that. And I think at that price point, it's a much better deal. And I've seen it on Mass Drop again since I bought it, and it's been even cheaper than that. So, yeah, there are better deals to be had if you're checking out this knife and you think it might be the one for you. Also, keep in mind that Kaiser, more than probably any other company, when they discontinue knives or roll out a new line, they slash prices dramatically. So I think that, yeah, just in time with this knife really not being all that popular, when it gets discontinued and people start to like just uh, get rid of that, that inventory, that you'll see these go down significantly in price as well. So if you play the waiting game and keep your eye out, you should be able to find this at a much better price. And that would make this a much more positive, I think, review, you know, if you're thinking about it at a much lesser price point than 188 bucks. So there's all that. All right. Also, if you want a little bit more information about this knife, um, I will link to another review down below from my buddy Jimmy Slash. Jimmy's a great guy, uh, always has a interesting outlook when it comes to knives, and he reviewed this actual Kaiser right here. So this specific one was in his hands. This is the one that he reviewed. It has a little bit of lock stick, which we'll talk about. Um, and his basic take on it mirrors mine in a lot of ways. So if you wanted to see another opinion, and uh, get some more information, definitely check him out. And check out his channel, because he's a, a really cool guy. But getting into the knife, talking about some of the details, and getting into the basic specs before we start to talk about the issues. So uh, what we have, like I said, we have these flat grinds. And for size comparison, uh, let's bring in a couple different things. So right here is the Spyderco Native 5. And you can see if I put them right on top, just the difference in 
cutting edge. I think the best comparison that I've had so far, just when I was thinking about the knife, was with the Paramilitary 2. You can see right here those edges are lined up, so we have basically a pretty darn similar cutting edge, and overall length is a little bit longer for the Paramilitary 2. And so the 943 is going to be pretty similar as well. When it comes to these two designs, I think that the Jernigan, um, like the clip point, I think is just a, a more attractive overall blade. But I think that just for the, the handle and the overall look of the knife, that this spear point just works better. And that's why I went with it. That's why I decided to get this one. It just is a little bit more sleek. Um, yeah, it just, it doesn't like close anymore, you know, doesn't make it any more slim when it's closed or anything. It's actually, you know, pretty much identical when you look at them closed. But yeah, for some reason, just that uh, that modified spear point did it for me, and it's just really good looking. Let's take a look at the weight. So 3.96 ounces, and yeah, that's mine. That's the the spear point, and then this one will be so about a quarter ounce heavier. So a little bit more lightweight, but you can't even really notice that. All right, so let's go through some of the other details of the knife. I'm going to move the, now that we're sort of done talking about the blades, obviously S35VN, it's a pretty popular steel. Talk about that real quick and just say, you know, I'm, I'm happy with that as the steel for this knife. Um, you can see uh, differences in the blade shape, but when it comes to like sharpening choil, um, there is a ricasso, but there's not quite a sharpening choil. It sort of terminates in a weird way on both knives if you see that. So, I don't know, it, usually the edge when you would have a choil like that would just run right up to the end of that, and it sort of doesn't, so just a little bit weird the way that ends right there. That's an oddity. You know, and then same thing, it's a little bit different, but still, I guess you could fix that actually a lot easier than on the other one. And that's really just because of the way the grind is, I guess, with that flat. So little bit of an oddity there, but you know, otherwise S35VN, it performs, you know, I, like I've said before, it's not my favorite of the high-end steels, but it really does get the job done, so no real complaints when it comes to that. And now I guess I'll take the, um, the clip point one out of the way for now and just go over the, the details of the rest of the knife uh, with my uh, spear point here. All right, so as we move on back, we have titanium frame. Um, the frame here is is really, really well done. Um, I love this like milling that creates some jimping and and traction uh, up top. That's a nice touch. You have it down below as well. Nice thick piece of titanium as well for looking at like thickness of the knife. So there's a 943. So it's a pretty thin overall knife, but you know just a yeah. But you can see that each of those slabs of titanium is actually a pretty significant slab. So that's where that like high three ounce, low four ounce weight comes from. And it does make it a pretty strong and, and sturdy knife. And it's pretty comfortable in hand uh, for the most part, uh, sort of because of that, because it does have just a little bit, a little bit more thickness than some of the, the thin streamed like gents carries that you might expect. All right, continuing to talk about the titanium, let's get this a little bit closer and show this texture pattern. This is some of the best texturing that I've ever seen in titanium. It's some of my favorite. Not, maybe not the best, and I'm sure you know people will be able to point out a bunch of different knives that are better. But just this traction, the way this feels in hand, is beyond excellent. So it's sort of like a cheese grater. You know, and, and constantly, you know, you see Kaiser or, you know, other companies doing something with milling and titanium in order to give you like points of contact and a little bit more grip. And this stuff is just excellent. And it probably wouldn't look very good if you did it to the whole handle, so I can understand why they only did this spot. But I wish it was everywhere. I mean, it is it is not sharp at all. It is just very, very clean and done very well. We have it on both sides. And you can see, I mean, this knife has been a user, so it is going to get scratched up. You can see some scratches in the titanium down here and just like wear from the pocket uh, over here. Um, 
kind of stuff is just going to happen. Uh, if you have a knife like this, you know, it is a pretty, pretty decently high polish. So I'm thinking you could like buff those out and repolish and, and be able to, um, to clean that up if you wanted to. But for me, it's not really that big of a deal. And as you can see, you know, even though these are very like significant, they're not that easy to see unless you're looking for them. So not really a big deal aesthetically. The knife is still very good looking. Um, completely open frame here with geez, uh, just these two standoffs all the way at the back. So that is nice. Let's talk about the locking mechanism. All right, and here's a little bit of misinformation that I've seen. I've seen some some places calling this a, a inset frame lock or just a, a number of other things. This is an inset liner lock. This is a liner. <laughs> and I saw this before on the Kershaw deadline. And yeah, there was just misinformation about what the locking mechanism was. But I mean, it is a liner. It is a piece of steel that is drilled in... <laughs> to the titanium frame, screwed in right there. You can see those screws. Now, that's a liner, so it's not a frame lock. Anyone calling it a frame lock, I, I don't know how you do, but there are a couple places that I've seen that have called it that the same way they did with the uh, with the deadline. So just a little bit of an oddity, but keep in mind, it's definitely a, um, a liner lock. Mine is perfect with lockup, no up and down, no left and right, no lock stick on this one, but there is lock stick on it, the other. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, Hitting the fit and finish issues though, and yeah, these are the places where I'm just sort of like, man, how how did Kaiser do this? Let's just let's just talk about them. All right, so we just talked about the that inset that inset liner lock, right? You can see right here in the middle of this titanium like texturing, there's a hole here, and then right below this pocket clip where those um, that liner is screwed in, and it's not that big of a deal, and it actually took me a while to, to own, a while of owning this knife to actually see that. But it's an eyesore, and it shouldn't be there. And you know, for the price point that they're asking, I consider that a a bit of a design flaw. You know, it's definitely not something that I want to see in a pristine, like quote unquote, high end production knife. You know, definitely not something. Um, another one that's just like that is when we're talking about the uh, the pocket clip. So the pocket clip here is one position, it's not reversible, and the only way to uh, to remove it or to adjust it or do anything, you know, if let's say you bent it out of place, you have to take the knife apart. It's screwed in from inside the knife. So one, that's a little bit weird, sure, but two, I mean, you see the back of those screw heads sort of just sticking out. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm being nitpicky. I'm, I'm usually not that way when it comes to, you know, little details. I, but again, at this price point, I, I don't think that it's something that you should expect from Kaiser. And it's not something I've seen from them in the, in the past. So that's sort of why I'm raising the red flag about it right here. The clip otherwise is actually pretty decent. Uh, it's very, very thin. And it seems like it might be something that could be an issue, but it actually retains pretty well. You can see just uh, how, um, how it'll retain and yeah, it's actually pretty good. So no issues with that. Just, yeah, just that, that little thing right there is, is odd. All right, now let's talk about the action. The action on this knife is another, it's, it's good and it's bad and it's another question mark. So opening the knife, you have a number of ways of doing it. All right, you have the thumb stud, which takes a lot of getting used to, all right? Just a lot of getting used to. I mean, I'm doing it easily right now, but it's just because I've had the knife for a long time. But what you really want to open the knife with is, like basically you have a front flipper that you can use, like so, a little slowly. But then also, if I pick up the camera, you can open it like that. And that's a lot of fun, but it's not like a standard flipper. Let me see if I have a standard flipper right here. Um, I'm sure I do. All right, so here's the Kaiser Dukes, right? Standard flipper with the Kaiser Dukes. You can hold down the flipper and the knife will open. See what I mean? My finger can stay there. With this, it actually can't. With this, if you hold your finger down, you're not going to be able to let the knife roll all the way back and open. So you have to pull out. And yeah, I mean, it's actually a pretty cool thing once you get used to it. But... The problem isn't so much the opening of the knife, it's the detent. I mean, the knife is, is pretty smooth, closing, as you can see right there, and not that hard once you get used to the thumb studs, but you can shake it out. 
See that? So I just shook it out. I mean, I can shake it all the way open with not much difficulty. And I know I've heard some, some issues with Kaiser and their detents in the past, but I mean, that's almost, you know, that's too much. You don't want that at all. Like, just don't want that. So I like that it's smooth and easy to open and, and like that. But if, if the detent was a little bit stronger, I would appreciate that a little bit more. So yeah, just another thing that's like, huh, just, just odd. All right. Um, getting into the other knife, there is lock stick on it. And the lock stick is not terrible, but I mean, you heard it. And so, I mean, it's pretty bad. It hasn't broken in. I've done some troubleshooting with it. I haven't been able to clear it. Um, the other people who have had this knife haven't been able to clear it. So it's just sort of there. So again, um, I've had a couple of these knives now, like these two, and yeah, they both just have some, some fit and finish kind of issues and design flaws. The biggest design flaw that I'm saving for last is an ergonomic design flaw, but it has to do going back to the opening of the knife. Um, because of the way that the knife has to open and you have this piece right here that is like uh, important to the opening of the knife, that's where your ramp is going to be for you to get the knife in hand. I mean, if we're looking at a realistic way that I would like to hold the knife, I would want this ramp to be a half inch forward, you know? I mean, holding, get, having my thumb up on the ramp here uh, isn't as useful as, like, let's say, if that ramp started at this point right here, it'd be a much more comfortable knife for use. But just because of the way that it has to open, the design of the knife, like, lends itself to having to be back here, which is sort of a bummer because it's just not as good um, in use and in hand as it could be, if that makes sense. So, yeah, just another uh, small issue when it comes to the knife. Uh, other than that, guys, I mean, I don't really have anything else to say. Uh, it is a pretty cool looking design, uh, and I do like it, and I am going to continue carrying it, and I am glad that I have it. But, again, at the $188 price point, I just don't see it. Um, you know, it works, but Kaiser has done much better. And I think even, you know... Even if you are to see this knife in the $100, $110 price range, uh, you know, there, there still are probably better knives out there at that range. So uh, unless you are just a really big fan of the way this knife looks and just like the action on it or whatever it is about it, I'd say maybe just uh, spend your money elsewhere. And not even saying not to spend it with Kaiser, but, you know, there might be just other knives that are better for you to choose from. All right, guys. So any questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, as always, let me know down below. Appreciate your time. I will talk with you soon. Take care and have a good one.